do it. <laughs> Sneakers and Stories, a podcast from Pint of Stuff with Mr. B and SJ. And there we go. There we go. I can't believe it again. I'm... I think everyone's going to be bored of me actually saying at the start of, of the intro of this, I can't believe that that intro is <laughs> I found a guy on Fiverr and paid him a Fiverr to, to I paid him $20 to basically do the voiceover. It's an amazing artist in LA. But anyway, um, no one wants to hear that. Um, I am, so we're on the podcast again. Um, so welcome. This is Sneakers and Stories. And um, we've got, um, we've got a very special guest with us. We have got uh, one of, um, I suppose, our community's, uh, I want to say biggest fans, it seems. Um, we've got Strix, <laughs> who has, who has, um, I would say as well, a stupendous sneaker collection and seems to be, go or certainly the tail end of last year, was going at it very hard. Um, so I just want to, uh, I'll just flick scenes as we, as we bring, will we bring mr strix in and uh oh. yeah let's uh let's see how this goes um boom and that didn't go <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a disastrous I told podcast you, i told you it was a bit amateur hour at times when <laughs> i do this um so but welcome. Uh, but welcome. I will figure that bit out Thank and uh, we'll, we'll definitely uh, work that through. So, Strix, it's been, it's been a long time. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, I don't know. I'm kind of like, uh, you know, we, we've been chatting for a long time on, on YouTube, in the chat, on Sneaker Streaming Sundays, on, on Instagram, and we finally get to meet sort of virtually in the m most peculiar of times when everyone's meet sort of meeting virtually well it's, it's appropriate so i'm i'm glad to be here <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's this good it's fun oh definitely you know we, we've uh, we obviously having a few technical challenges um but we will uh, but it's fine it it's is fine. fine it's always fine let's uh what does that do and uh ooh. life is technical challenges so. completely ah there we go <laughs> There we go. I've managed to sort of do it. There we go. Let's squeeze out. Let's squeeze over. This is going to be one of those podcasts where um, everyone's like hearing all the noises of me moving on the chair. So um, clearly a big sneaker fan. Um, clearly, <laughs> clearly, actually, I see here what if you listen to this on Spotify or, or podcast, what you can't see is that Strix is also wearing what looks like a rather cool Stussy um, hoodie. Um, so that's one of our favorite brands. Um, so if anyone yeah. from Stussy's listening, um, <laughs> hit us up. You've got fans in yeah. Texas and in uh, and and in the UK. So SJ, um, yeah. I think SJ, um, we should get into it. We should shut up, you. Yeah, and uh, we, we want to hear Strix. We do. You? Well, that's what I was going to pass it over to you. Were you? Yeah. I was, gonna, <laughs> I was gonna let you lead with the first no, question. You do that. Okay, I do that. So I'm stroking the dog. Oh, you don't want to do that. So I suppose you know, like we have, um, you know, we've had a few people on now, and one yeah. of the like the first questions that we always, uh, that we've always, that we're starting to ask people to begin with is, you know, like we, we obviously all spend too much money at times, probably on sneakers, or too much time thinking about them or talking about them. But that's you know, it's a healthy, it's a healthy habit. But what's the first? Ah, see, Strix is going like, no, it might not be. I, I, look, <laughs> there's definitely worse habits. So, what what I want to That's ask true. you is, can you remember the first sneaker that kind of like did it for you, or what is your first sneaker memory, really? Well, um, let's see. I mean, I can remember the first pair of shoes that I was really excited to have, which was. Um, late mid to late eighties. I'm I'm older, forty. Um, mm -hmm. so it's it's got to be the Vision Streetwear like Chuck Taylor style shoe that I had that was like white and black, like almost like an elephant slash cement print yep. kind of thing on the outside. And uh, I loved those because in the in the eighties I was an aspiring skater, mm -hmm. and that never really panned out. Mm -hmm. Um. So, uh, you know, I remember those, though, as the first shoes I was really proud to have on my feet. Um, but I would say the shoes that I lusted after and were the ones that really got me 
really in the shoes were the Air Jordan 3s, the Black Cements, when they first came out. Um, I remember that vividly because I'm old enough to remember that vividly. <laughs> and do you, so, so, so what year was that, do you think? The Black Cements originally came out in 87 or 88. I think it was 88. Mm-hmm. I think can't it was remember 88. that. But yeah, it was, that was a monument. That's what set me on. I started paying attention to shoes yeah. every year. Like when Jordan would wear new shoes, that was a monumental event every year. Okay. At least it was here, you know, cause I was a huge basketball fan yeah. at the time too. And so, um, it was always something you had to, you paid attention to of very, uh, fervently. So, um, yeah, but the the streetwear shoes, the Vision Streetwear shoes, were definitely the first ones I I can remember. Um, I know I also had other shoes along the way that were like. Uh, I'll back up and say my mom is Korean, and uh, at the time she had plenty of friends that were. Um, I'll just put selling knockoffs. Okay. Um, okay. So That's fine. Uh, you know, I had knockoff shoes of one kind or another that I was not super happy about having to wear, but uh, we weren't making a lot of money at the time. And so, you know, I got what I got. And so, and I remember the Vision Street where shoes weren't terribly expensive, but I really liked the look of them a lot. So that's, uh, that's the first real memory of that. And like I said, the Air Jordan 3s were the first ones that got me really into shoes. Nice. Like I, it's it's funny you say that the vision weren't that expensive. I seem to recall in the UK they were really hard to get. That was another shoe that I really, really yeah I really wanted. Um, okay. Like at the, at the time, um, like I there was Etnies that I just had never seen, it, and, and and this okay. is in the tail end of the eighties because I might be the wrong mm-hmm. the wrong side of a of of a monumental <laughs> birthday. Um, <laughs> And um, there, so there was the the Etnies which I'd never seen, but I'd always saw in Thrasher or Skateboard Mag, so I always wanted those. Um, oh yeah. And and the Vision ones, and it's funny, like I haven't heard anybody talk about Vision Streetwear for so long, and that oh, yeah. really takes me back completely. That was, I remember going to the mall to get those shoes. It was a, it was a big event. Um, you know, there was plenty of stuff that, you know, I remember wanting skateboard wise and everything back then, but that was pretty much the only one I really got that I really wanted. Yep. I had a cheapy deck and not very, you know, the trucks were whatever they can, you yeah. know, it was all like, basically it came together as a package. It wasn't something you pieced together. Yep. Um, you know, I wanted a Pal Peralta board and I wanted all these things and I never got them, uh, but that's okay. You know, it, it's not like. I don't think that affected my skating. I think my skill for skating was just not there at all. I could barely ollie. So, uh. <laughs> hey, hey, we all have to start somewhere. I I remember how like just how long I was begging my parents for for that Pal Peralta, um, mm-hmm. and I probably bought the I probably got them in the end to get me the wrong one. Like, do you think like? There was no way I was ever going to find Vert anywhere, and yet I had this Lance Mount in Future Primitive thing, which I didn't need that. But all my friends had no. had, had been getting boards for ages, it seemed. Um, and it was a big moment. It was a big moment. Yep. But um, so, so that then moves us to those th- th- those Jordan threes. Yeah. So they were they were a big deal. <laughs> yeah. And so it, it is the Jordan three still your thing? I do love Jordan 3 still. Um, I struggle with the fact that I'm very picky about the colorways that they come out with on them. Um, I'm not just all over every colorway. Um, and then at some point, the shape on them changed. Um, they got a bit chunkier. Uh, and just with the more recent releases, like the uh, the Chicago, the red ones, the red and black Chicago and yep. stuff like that, they change the actual shape on them to be more like the OGs and they look way better on foot in my opinion. So, um, I had to get it. I had to get those. Um, and I actually got two pair cause I'm going to paint one of them black, black for black cement. Really? Cause 
matches, basically you just switch out the red on them. Okay. And they're black cements. So and that should be a fairly easy custom. So and I, that's about the level of custom I can handle. Super easy. So <laughs> I don't know. Like that sounds hard to me. Yeah, I I, I would be way too nervous to do that. <laughs> Oh, I'm a, I'm still nervous to do it for sure. Um, that's why I haven't done it yet. I've had the the shoes for I don't know what like two months now. Yeah. I still haven't gotten the, the courage up to do anything to them. So. I think you need to do like on Instagram just like a series of posts, like you just literally like do a time lapse of it. Oh, that'd be amazing. That would be that amazing. would be better. Yeah, definitely. That's true. Definitely. Definitely. No, it's yeah. it's um, I don't. I can't even scratch off the top layer on my NBA blazers. <laughs> yeah, no, see, that's the thing. Like, every time I get a shoe that I think, you know, oh, this would be great for customs, you know, like the, I had a pair of the uh, Levi 4s, uh, mm-hmm. Air Jordan 4s that came out. Yep. Um, and I was like, oh, I'm going to do all kinds of custom stuff to this. You know, there's such, so many amazing things. And I was just like, nope, I didn't. And I ended up selling them all. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I just, I, I like. We've got a number of those SBs that you're supposed to take the paint off. Mm-hmm. Uh, just I, let it go naturally. I, yeah, yeah. I can't do it. And that's the thing: when you're not skating, it doesn't go naturally very no, quickly. No, <laughs> no, they will last for years like that, like mm-hmm. years and years. Yeah. So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna hand it over as SJ is now um, handed the dog back to the floor. Um, I'm gonna like let, let's let's hand this over to you, SJ. So so with the the Jordan Free thing, um, out of all of the the pairs of Jordans that you have, past and present, <laughs> what are your top three? Wow. Um, man, see, this is the thing. I fall into, I fall into basically a very mainstream category on a lot of these things. I don't have super eclectic taste when it comes to the Jordans. Um, I am a big fan of the OG Chicago's, just like 99% of the world is. Um, and I've learned to love that color blocking more and more. Um, it's like I re- I prefer the shattered backboard 2.0s to the 1.0s because I like that color block better. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe because it looks like an old school dunk more. I don't know, <laughs> like a regular, you know, <laughs> yeah, dunk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it, but I would say the Chicago Jordan ones. I would say. Sure. I mean, are we talking out of all Jordans, basically? Yeah, all Jordans, past okay. and wow. present. Wow, SJ, that's I know that's, that's like... a tough. I know that's actually a real tough it is question. A tough one, but yeah. it's good. It's a good question. I'm trying to think through. I mean, I love I love Jordan ones. I love Jordan threes. Um, I don't really love Jordan fours that much. Um, I'm kind of in a minority when it comes to that. Um, fives, I can do sometimes. Um, Sixes and sevens hold a nostalgic point for me in a lot of ways because that was a shoe that I really, I was really into playing basketball at that point, and they were shoes I really wanted. I never got them, but they were shoes I really wanted. Um, but for wearing now, it's threes and ones. Um, for the so for the ones, Chicago ones for sure. Shattered backboard twos, um, and then I'll move over to. I'll give you two of each. I'll give you the Air Jordan 3's Black Cements, and then one that I just picked up recently that I haven't... It came out. It didn't come out, like, in the 90s or anything, early 80s or anything like that, but it was... Uh, it's the Infrared 23 AJ3's. They have... They're black and white with just a little bit of infrared bits on them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're super easy to wear, um, and I'm a sucker for infrared in general. Yep. So, you know, it's... Whenever I see that on a shoe, it instantly catches my attention. Doesn't matter if it's a fifty dollar pair span on sale or if it's a you know super high end two hundred and fifty dollar shoe. So, so I sp- so that's um all right. So so that's the like 
obviously you, you're top. Yeah. I'm gonna yeah. spin. I'm gonna spin this the other way. So, and, and we've asked some people this question as well. So, of all the shoes you've bought, like sometimes we all get a bit sucked into the hype. <laughs> Which are the ones you regret the most? And not just Jordans, just everything. Yep. Yeah. Uh, man, that's it's tough because I feel like I don't. I don't regret buying many pairs. Um, I feel like I'm fairly calculated when it comes to it. So um, I'm trying to think. I mean, there's definitely pairs that I've been like, why was I so into these when they first came out? I still like them, but why was I so into these when they first came out? Because now it's like, what? I don't really, I like them and I keep them, but I don't know if I will wear them very much ever again. Um, for instance, we'll go for a recent one, actually. Um, the Off-White Terra Tigers that came out that were um, the, looked like a spiky track shoe on the yep. bottom. Yeah. They were the first round of those that came out. I really, I honestly do like the way they look a lot. Yeah, It's just not a shoe I can, I, I want to wear a lot. Mm -hmm. I could, I just don't want to wear it a lot. And I'm like, why did I spend, you know, the hundred and whatever it was 80 bucks on them you know it's like yeah that i could have used that money in other places for sure um because i've got shoes on my you know check off list that i'm trying to get that i'm like i could have easily taken that money and applied it to this shoe and i would be way happier with this other shoe more than likely so i i don't want to dog on that shoe i know a lot i got a lot of heat and most people weren't into it i actually think it's a really really interesting design um but i think it does have its flaws from wearability standpoint from a wearability standpoint yeah so. that that's very true it design wise it is a nice sneaker but yeah, yeah. wearing wise no yeah yeah see i think i've sw seen someone wearing it and i i swear they like i do, do the spike to do, do the the things yeah, they come off. Oh, they, yeah. Okay. Do they do? I don't know. Like I, I, like I'd only seen this one person, and I've only obviously right. only ever seen the pictures, and then I saw one person wearing them, and I was like, "All right, did you cut them off? <laughs> did, like this is showing my complete ignorance of this shoe because it wasn't doing it for me at the time." Right. No, I think they. Uh, I think they eventually wear off because okay. um, they're not, I mean, it's just rubber connected yeah, yeah. with a tiny point on the sole, you know, so it's eventually going to rub off. I haven't worn mine enough to make them make them rub off, and people have talked about how it's weird and squishy to walk on them and that kind of thing, but yeah, okay. I didn't think they were super weird to walk on. They feel a little different, but I've heard people, all kinds of people be like, oh, these are terrible to walk in and all that kind of stuff. I didn't have much problem with them. It's just the wearability from a how it looks on me and that kind of thing standpoint, so. So, so, so you must be one of the like because I know that I have huge regrets on certain shoes that I really shouldn't have bought and I'm never going to wear ever. Um, it's just I got sucked into it, <laughs> into the hype. Uh, the Annex definitely did. I think Levi did as well. Um, I don't think we asked Toxic. Did, did did we ask Toxic that? I'm not sure. I don't think we did. Um, but I think um, you know, I suppose you know to spin that as well then so and obviously we've just started doing the just the waffle on a wednesday where i bring out a beta and so i was going to right. ask you then what's the shoe that you kind of regret wearing too much so that now when you look at it you're like oh i love that shoe why did i do that to it <laughs> because i love it. you know what i mean it's like this weird yeah well, it's kind of a it's kind of a bittersweet thing, right? Like you're supposed to wear your shoes, you want to wear them out. Um, that's the idea, but you also want them to look the way you want them to look, whether that's slightly worn, completely new, or battered. You know, some people love to have their shoes battered, and that's fine. I'm not one of those people. I'm more of the slightly worn to brand new look is what I prefer. Mm -hmm. um, man. Uh, you know, I will go back as a, it's, it may be a kind of a cop out, um, but I'll go back to those Vision Streetwears. I really kind of wish I still had them. Um, 
because I actually got to, when you first sent me some of the sample questions, I got to thinking about it, and I was like, you know what, I wonder if I can find a pair of those that'll fit me on eBay somewhere or something like that, and it's just like, there's not any of my size, for sure. Yeah. I think I found one listing for the for the shoes that I remember, um, and they were, you know, size nine. So I could have gotten them for nostalgic reasons, but it's not. I I would want to put them on once and then probably have them completely tear apart. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I I totally understand that. I, as I've said, yeah. I've said many times, there's the the Airwalk prototypes, which I, you know, every every week I have a look on on eBay just in case. <laughs> Just in case some random person, I did find an old listing for somebody in in the Netherlands that that had a pair that was similar. Um, so one day yeah. they will pop up, as as your vision yeah. will. Yeah, you know, they they will pop up. Absolutely, I've got the notifications set on eBay. So. <laughs> <laughs> the new listing. Oh, completely. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to pass over um, to to SJ. So so. You... You kind of keep looking to your right there. So is that where your stash of sneakers is? Because I'm intrigued to know <laughs> how many pairs there you are, actually have. So Cause... there are some sneakers over here. Um, there are, I keep um, others in the closet. And so um, some of these are, you know, they're newer ones. They're ones that I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with them, if I'm going to return them or not, that kind of thing. Um, in total, these plus the ones in the club, I don't have a huge collection. I keep a fairly tight collection. Um, I'm one of these people that if there's a shoe that I really, really want and it's one that I can't get aside from resale, um, then I'm going to move a couple of pairs of shoes to make way for that yeah. pair of shoes. Um, so, I mean, in total, I'm probably, I've probably got about close to 40 pairs. It's not very many. Um, it's pretty, like I said, a pretty tight collection. Um, I mean, part of that comes from the fact that there's a huge gap where I wasn't collecting yep. yeah. any. Yep. Yeah. Um, I mean, you're probably talking a 10 year gap where I just wasn't really doing much with shoes for whatever reason. I can't really explain it. I think I got into life all through, all through college or all through high school. I was super into basketball shoes. Okay. That was the nineties and yep. that's what everybody was into. Um, and then I got into, um, college and I think it was probably around then that I just kind of stopped yeah. caring so much about the shoes. I was, Grabbing whatever I was wearing, Chuck Taylors, I was wearing um, Adidas Trail Runners, I was wearing all kinds of random stuff, um, and I didn't pick up until, you know, a couple of years ago again, so I don't, maybe it's just that I haven't been collecting again for a long time, check back on me in two to three years, it's <laughs> maybe more like a well, I th- hundred G collecting or something like that. <laughs> yeah, it starts to get out of hand, I can tell, I think you've actually got the right idea around shifting of like, okay, yeah. so there's that shoe there, right? I need to shift a couple of pairs to yeah. to make way, but also to, I suppose, semi justify if you do visit the 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 the, the darker places of yeah. Goat and StockX, uh, which you know obviously right. makes us doesn't make us feel good. Um, well, it's one of those things like. I know there are plenty of people, especially in the chat and on the podcast, that have been anti uh, resale and pay, paying for resale, basically, which I completely, completely understand. Um, but because I was out for so long, there's so many shoes yep. that I'm trying to catch up on that I didn't get a chance to get, and they're only available in resale. That yeah. it's it's kind of a hard decision, and then I made the decision, you know, when I got back into it, that I was okay with. Yep with buying from resale and occasionally flipping to make yep. way and make a little extra cash for those purchases that I want to make. So, so what's on your resale wish list then? <laughs> um, let's see. You know what, with Air Max day or Air Max month or whatever, having just concluded, I kind of, it's like every year I kind of remember, oh, yeah, there's this Air Max that I want, and there's this Air Max that I want. And one of the models that I was super into when I was a kid was the 180, um, which is kind of a random model. Mm-hmm. Um, but it 
uh, there's a there's one uh, there's a Berlin model that came out a couple of years ago. Yeah. Um, fairly limited. Um, there haven't been very many sales on the aftermarket of them. Um, and they're not terribly expensive, but they're one. They're a pair that I've been looking at recently. Um, and actually, a pair that you guys have reviewed, and I actually looked at your review. Um, the Stussy Blazers. Huh. Um, high or low? Really, uh, yeah. Go ahead. So, so what was is that the high or the low? Yeah. So the 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 mid. Yeah. yeah the the mid. Blazer mid is yeah. what I is the one I really kind of want. Um, I like the low too, but if I'm picking one or the other, I'm probably picking the mids. So. Yeah, I was gutted when they didn't have them in my size that day. I oh, nearly, yeah. Yeah, I nearly cried. You did. I, uh, <laughs> I, I'm I, going to co- make a confession. I haven't worn the mid yet. No. Um, yet. That's fair. I, look, you live in a place that is uh, not quite as dry yes. as the place that I live. Um, here, wearing nappy suede shoes is fine 90% of the year. Exactly. Um, Although I will say the beginning of this year has been like the wettest we've ever been here. So um, we've basically been getting rain. It feels like every other day. And so um, it's been, uh, you know, quarantine's been good. I've been wearing my nappy leather shoes inside if I need to. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that is one of the benefits of quarantine is uh, is literally, you know, I can feel justified in wearing <laughs> In wearing shoes yes. that I wouldn't wear outside, inside, and not feel so bad in, for it. Exactly. You know, it's funny because I'm. A, this is the one eighty uh-huh. size collaboration that came yeah. out, um, and it's nappy suede as well, and that's what I'm wearing right now, just because I'm inside. Well, I was going <laughs> to ask you actually, what were you wearing on on your feet today? There you uh, go. And there we go. There you go. Size one eighties. Yeah. One, wow. It's a. I mean, it's a trainer. It's, yeah, yeah. It is what it is. You know, I mean, um, I like them a lot. I like the pink hits. Mm-hmm. I like a lot of it. Um, and so there's only a few 180s that I really like. And these are one of those pairs, the Berlins for sure. I'm not a huge fan of the CDGs, but I do appreciate them. So mm-hmm. anyway. that's. A, I was expecting you to say, because we've discussed with everyone, well, I've got this dunk and that dunk and this dunk. Because <laughs> it is the year of the dunk. So, no, well, to be fair, I do have dunks on the list. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, I feel I this mean, is a big you know, list. <laughs> the list is long. It's it's a it's a long list, and I'm going to bring it up right now to look at it. <laughs> um, it's it, and it's kind of all over the place, actually. You know what? It's funny. I never heard you guys talk about it a few times. The Atlas dunks. Yes. That um, they have the tie back to photography, which I'm yep. a photographer. Um, and they're a pair that I looked at maybe three months ago, um, and they were probably a hundred and fifty dollars cheaper than they are now. Yep. Uh, on the resale market, and I looked back at them recently, and I was like, "Holy moly, these things shot through the roof all of a sudden!" And you never know which dunk is gonna yeah. do that exactly. Because certain ones do and certain mm-hmm. ones don't. Like I would have expected, you know, the the more recent, like the the diamond uh, dunks, the black yeah. ones that came out. I would have expected them to shoot through the roof more. I would have expected even the black pigeons to shoot through the roof more than they have. Um, so I think though, with those, if if they'd have re, so if we, if they'd have done all of those this year. Oh yeah, you know the price would like irrespect. You know, let's imagine that they came out in February. Um, the yeah. price now would still be really high on those. Like the pigeon price has gone up a little bit, um, it has. but but it's not like obscene the way the, the way the way some of them are. Where I I, I look on there, but um, no, those Atlas ones um, are are lovely. I want the um, I want the the actual black ones. Uh, right. which came with the special box, which is uh, yeah. based on, I'm going to say Agfa Film. I probably got that wrong. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. And um, yeah, they are, they're a lovely shoe. We we managed to get hold of um, all of the, the stuff that came with the special box um, from the store. You just need the box. I just need the <laughs> box and the shoes. 
as <laughs> but I have the stuff. Yeah. But um so I suppose so do you with the photography thing then do you yeah. put like do you then put extra effort into taking pictures of your shoes? Oh yeah. 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 I mean that at first I was like, you know what? I just I started a new Instagram cuz I wanted to have a place just to throw shoot photos mm -hmm. and I eventually the photographer in me was like you can't just take iPhone photos of these shoes all the time if you've got this gear here, here let's use it you know so I mean there's a light back here to my bad to my left that I use all the time I've got a backdrop set up off camera here nice. um, and so I yeah I spend way too much time doing that too much effort uh, for the payoff but that's okay uh, that's funny. It's it just is it's what I do. Yeah. Um, and so and I can't stand. That's the thing is I can't stand having and uh, so or like a, a social media feed that doesn't have a consistent like feel to it yep. and everything like that. And I think that's part of the. Uh, I was a graphic designer for ten years, so uh. I think that's part of what comes through. Like that that's in me. I can't get rid of that. I yep. got burnt out on graphic design, but. There's certain things about it that I just they don't leave you. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, oh, I can appreciate that. Like, well, I have all of these random cameras lying around now, uh, mm -hmm. which is half the time. So now I, I use them for other things. I'm not a photographer, but uh, um, I have to say the iPhone is getting better. Um, but we, oh, it is. But, uh, it is. Like we will we'll get back to shoes because otherwise you you and I will probably drift into. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> drift into uh, uh, other areas of interest. So, um, so that's what's on your 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 wish list. Um, yeah, of what you've seen that's coming out in pro like the next couple of months or so, um, or longer to be honest. Yeah, w what are you most hyped about? Oh, let's see. You know, it's funny. I haven't seen anything from. Jordan or anything like that that I'm just like I have to have that um, and I feel like the ones are getting kind of tired at this point yep. um, I still love them as a silhouette but they've driven it into the ground and that was their strategy I'm sure was mm -hmm. to just flood the market and eventually they would just kind of pull back the taps and turn it back to a drip and then you know it would just be you'll get a Jordan every couple of months maybe yep. you know that kind of thing um I would say the Atmos Elephant dunks that are coming out. I, yep. I need those. Yep. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Aren't they coming towards oh, the end of the year? Yeah, they are. Yeah. It's, I don't think it's until fall or even yeah, winter. Yeah, that's what like I that. thought. November time seems to ring a bell. Yeah, the I one that just got shown recently on social media is the new Kevin Bradley like Blazer Mid. It's oh, got yes. that velvet velour oh, red yes. top to it and everything like that man those are amazing i'm all in on them <laughs> i'm all in on them but but the thing is i'm also and it's interesting these seem to have split opinion i'm all in on the lows because, really yeah because i love the straps okay. i love the straps this is ridiculous okay it's velcro straps i uh i i i actually really like the way they look i just don't know if i'm gonna like wearing velcro straps You'd so. be surprised. Um, and this <laughs> might be because I am the wrong side of a certain birthday barrier and it's happening. But I'm telling you, life is easier with Velcro straps. That's because you travel a lot and you have to take your shoes off at the airport. That's, that's all fair. it is. That's fair. Yeah. yeah. That, I mean, that, I, I'm one of the, I'm, you know, one of the desperate ways I'm trying to stay young is that I wear my shoes, you know, loose laced anyway. So <laughs> I'm used to that vibe anyway. So it's, it's, it probably wouldn't be that much of a stretch for me. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's funny though, because everyone looks at me, were well, you wearing those old man shoes? No, 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 no. These, these are useful. <laughs> <laughs> they're SBs. They're SBs. They've just they've just got straps on them. In fact, exactly. you, you have two pairs of those SBs because yes. you loved them so much. That's true. That's true. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're they're the best travel shoes. Like, admittedly, okay. I so they they were uh, a collaboration with Numbers, 
Um, okay. They're a yeah. blazer low. They're in this red um, colorway. The first pair I got in the US and I beat the daylights out of and I've worn so much, but the suede went, it went, the suede went shaggy. I can't really explain okay. it. I got another pair over here in the UK and the suede feels entirely different. Yeah, it's really weird. It feels rough and, and not like, I, I can't put my finger on why they feel different, but they do. Interesting. Yeah. But, um, and, and now I've, I've done the same with, with a blazer lows, the, the, the bruised peach that I, uh, I got a couple of years ago, which I love as well, but this isn't about me. This is about you. So <laughs> SJ, um, I, I just end up just drifting off into <laughs> random tangents. It's, uh, right. yeah, it's a waffle. It, it is a waffle. It's always a waffle with me. So what's the, the biggest L that you've taken recently on a pair that you really wanted and didn't get? That maybe you threw a tantrum on, or at least internally. <laughs> Let's see. I mean, man, I think I'm trying to think through. It's been so many. I've been on a fairly decent hot streak as of late. So I've been able to get almost all the releases I wanted. Um, of the recent ones, though, oh, man. Let's see. I think, I mean, a super recent, or not, a super recent, it's basically all the non-SB dunks that have come out. I've uh, struck yeah. out on all of them. Um uh, and then probably stretching back to last year, and it's funny because now I look back and I don't, I'm, don't really want them. Um, but at the time, I was super mad that I felt like I was like one of the only people not getting them. Was uh, the Travis Scott highs that came out, the Jordan highs, Jordan one highs. I was, I felt like I was super close to getting those. I was super prepared for getting them, and then it didn't happen, and I was just like, what? is going on um now like i said i look back now and i'm like i think the hype just got a hold of me there i and don't get me wrong i have travis scott shoes that i really like the af ones the jordan one lows actually um i like this a lot but the jordan one highs for some reason with time i've grown less and less excited about really so i think they got dri driven into the ground by social media so much mm -hmm. But I'm just like I'm. I'm over it. I'm over it now. I don't. I don't. I don't need those. And I'm certainly not paying anywhere near the re the resale prices for them now. So what are they going for at the moment? Do, do we think? I mean, at my size, they're a thousand. What? Eleven hundred, something like that. That's just obscene. It's uh, yeah. It's just too much money, isn't it? I I uh, I can't justify that kind of cost. Um, I can only justify that if I'm moving, you know, like six pairs of sneakers. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. just not making room for that. But yeah. I suppose, you know, it, yeah, that's, that, that's fair. I, I, it just seems, and I know that, that many people can justify it in one way or another, or that they, you know, as they, they do what you've just suggested, you know, you yeah. sell six pairs to replace with one pair, you know, and that kind of balances out. I just, yeah it just hurts inside somewhat you know i feel like a little bit like oh really yeah it's no i completely understand that that side of it too and it's one of those things that i feel like the more expensive shoes that i have you know i am more delicate with them i don't want to wear them yeah. as much you know that kind of thing and it's kind of a shame because like i said like we, we all talk about shoes are made to be worn they're yeah. not made to be looked at you know that kind of thing but you can't help but associate cost of something with how precious it is of to course. you. You know that kind of thing. Of course. So. Yeah. You know, I. I... Yeah. Huxley, come on. <laughs> Huxley! <laughs> he's, <laughs> oh, he's just started. He's, he's, he's getting close to when he gets fed. And so he's getting very uh, excited at the moment, which, uh, yeah, is, uh, is not fun for people on the podcast, I'm sure, of just hearing every every now and again a tail banging um, as, he's, as, as he bangs on the table yeah. that we're on. So I think, um, you know, I think you've, you've drifted into... Go on, SJ. I think you've, you've drifted into 
um, the question of, so what is your most extravagant sneaker purchase? <laughs> uh, I would say it has to be, and I hated paying this, but I really, really, really wanted them. Um, I mean, it has to be the Union Black Toe Jordan 1 that I bought. Um, I had paid a very, I mean, that's... You don't have to tell us. It's a pretty decent amount. Yep. Um, and I had to move, I think, probably three pairs of shoes to pay for them. Wow. Um, but in my eyes, it's worth it. They were very, And I got them very near DS. They weren't even DS. They were, you know, and so slightly used, yep. very slightly used. And I still paid a king's ransom for them. Um, but like I said, I, in the end, given what I moved for it, I didn't end up paying a ton, but it was more than I really wanted to pay for it. So. And so I, I, I'll ask you the question, are they as good in hand as they look in pictures? <laughs> I think they are. Um, I think they're one of those hype shoes that um, they do kind of stand the test of time in a lot of ways. Um, I mean, they're on a classic, classic silhouette, and a black toe on a Jordan is always going to be very, it's going to look good 99% of the time. Um, and they're great materials. They feel good. The leather's amazing on them. I get, I have no complaints about it whatsoever, other than the fact that you have to pay through the nose to, to yeah. have them now. So. Yeah. No, I, uh, well, we, we both really wanted them, didn't we? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, it, yes. It was, uh, and it's one of those, it's one of those things like there aren't many shoes that I'm really like with the off white stuff. Um, I think I've bought one pair of off whites in the, on the resale market. They're great shoes. They're interesting shoes, but they're just, most of them are not worth the price that they're going for. I mean, I'm not going to pay. I, I randomly looked last night, the, the OG off white Prestos, the black and tan one. I mean, literally the asking price, the asking price on goat right now for my size two thousand dollars and it's like i'm not there's no why would anyone do this you know what i mean <laughs> I, I, uh, like yeah like i i often regularly go back in and and, and look at the blazers I, I look at the serena ones every now and again just to oh yeah just to check but it's um mm-hmm. it, it's the sandy ones what what were they the halloween ones yeah the hell the hell eve yeah. yeah i have a pair of those that i paid resale for but i got i got them through goats uh used clean okay. section and they're i mean i got them for a pretty decent discount so i was happy with the purchase yep. there yeah i look at that quite regularly um as a as a place but uh the the challenge for goat certainly in the uk is you they don't quite list all the fees so we uh, uh we never quite sure is that the import tax are, are we gonna get charged import tax or are we not and so it's a little bit of a lottery um, oh, yeah. and so you'll add like 20 percent to whatever it was that you paid um which yeah it just makes it a bit surprised so as much as i love the co- the, the concept of what they do around those things yeah. StockX is as much as it irritates me is more transparent <laughs> so it's uh, like you know what you're paying uh, it's still obscene um but sure it's, it's all up sure. front um which is the it difference is. i mean that's the thing you know we have the luxury here in the states of you know having both yeah um and for a while there we weren't even paying tax on any of it you know it was basically you paid cost of the shoe plus shipping and that was it um and then i think you know towards the end of last year they started charging tax because um there was a federal uh, court case that was put into place that basically said all uh-huh. online marketplaces have to start charging tax, no matter whether they have a location in that state or oh, not. Okay. And that was because that was the, the the definition before was you don't have to pay tax, you don't have to charge tax if you don't have a physical location yep. or warehouse in that state. Uh-huh. And so uh, yeah. now it's completely changed, and so you know it buying resale, especially now, is you know. It's a costly endeavor that I don't know, you know, that many people will partake, partake in, especially during the pandemic. 
and that kind of thing. Yeah, so. you're right. So, so here's a question then. So, so do they do they base the tax based on where StockX is based or based on no. where you're based? They fill that. Yeah. Okay. So where you're based. So that's what it used to be in in California. So California, very much were right. Okay. I just remember this on Amazon in particular was always like they never gave you the full price until you put your state in and then and then suddenly it's California mm-hmm. and it's like extra 10 percent an extra 10 percent just because yeah yep. <laughs> just because uh, uh, that's California yeah, for well, you I mean it's fair it's it is what it is I yeah, did yeah. it I just yeah you got used to the to being spoiled here with the no no sales tax and you're like this is amazing you know blah 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 this is great <laughs> that's so. so cool that's so cool. It's um, so a kind of um, like uh, I don't know, SJ. Uh, are we? I'm thinking. I suppose the so are you saying that it's it's rained a lot this winter, so you haven't worn. Oh, yeah. So so when when you're finally allowed out, <laughs> finally, what's the pair of shoes that that you're gonna wear out? Um, and it can't be those one eighties that that that, you, that you've got on today. You know what? It's probably going to be those Safari Dunks. Nice. Um, and I haven't worn them. Uh, I yeah, those will probably be those. Um, right now, I you know, being a dad, being at home all the time, when you run out, it feels more like a mission critical, like yeah. uh, surgical precision hit that you're doing. Um, I don't wear a lot of uh, a lot of my the shoes that I like the most out, um, but my I mean my beaters that stay by the door are pretty much uh, the React Element eighty seven uh, Anthracite colorway that I I wear those I've been wearing those into the ground because they're super comfortable for me. Um, I bought a full size up. Okay, and they've been perfect for me. So, so there um, we go. Uh, yeah, so I wear those to run errands. You know. Quick errands these days. Yeah. I wear those all the time. I mean, if it were a different time, I'd probably throw on. You know, I'd go into the closet, pick something out, and, and throw it on real quick. But now it's. I feel like I got to be. It's in my head. I feel like I got to be agile. I feel like I got to be able to like take off at a moment. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So that's um. That's actually like. So you're the first person I would like. That wasn't the shoe that I was expecting you to say. Even even to have by the door to run out with. But I think really? that you must be the one person that was sensible, and that actually <laughs> went a size up. Um, unlike the rest of us. Unlike them. the rest of us. Who... I only did that. I only did that because I bought them. I bought a pair through Nike last year sometime. Um, and I went a half size up on them and it just wasn't enough. Um, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to send these back. But if there's the colorway I wanted was the anthracites. And at the time, the anthracites were selling on the resale market for 300 plus dollars. And I was just like, I'm not paying that much money for those. Um, and then Nike restocked them and they've been, they've like flooded the market recently with them Yep. Um, to the point where they're all they're going on sale practically at this point. Um, but when those came back on the market and they were re-released, I was like, you know what? I'm buying these and I'm going to full size up because I know that's going to fit me. And yep. it was great. So. And so I suppose then I was, I'd ask you then, so you've gone full size up. Do, mm-hmm. do they make you walk funny if you, cause they make me walk funny, but I've, okay. I probably should have gone like, I've got two pairs and I should have definitely, I still, do. I, I didn't learn the lesson. And, and I find that I, I walk, I end up walking as if not quite on tiptoe, but I feel like I'm being okay. tipped forward because, you know, obviously it, it feels a little bit like you're on a wedge. And I'm curious if, if because you've gone that size up and they actually fit, let, let's be honest, they actually fit. <laughs> do you feel like you're walking normally, which is a really weird question to ask. I know. It's, it's definitely not a weird question. I do have kind of weird feet in that I have wider feet. I have, um, so almost always I, I wear 12 and Jordan ones, yeah. but I would say I'm closer because a lot of Nike running shoes, Air Max, all that kind of stuff, they run more narrow. Yep. Um, I almost always am more like 12 and a half, but the problem with 12 and a half is that it's a unicorn size and it, yeah. for a lot of shoes. It just doesn't exist. Or if it does, they have like, 
you know, two pairs, 25% of the pairs yep. that they do in other sizes, you know, uh, like in a 12 or a 13. Um, so some shoes I can wear a 13 in, some shoes I can wear the React Elements, the LNA says I have no issue wearing the 13. Mm -hmm. Um, and because I mostly wear dark socks with them, you don't get the weird kind of, oh, he's got like space at the front of his toe area uh, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The other thing is that because I have a higher arch, I wear different insoles. So the insoles I wear are black insoles, which covers all of that up. And yeah, so yeah. they don't ever bug me with the, you can see the cork in yeah. the toe, you know, or anything like that. So, so. so you take, you actually put an insole into it. Yeah, uh, I take the, the insole out, the, the you know, the factory insole out, yeah. which I didn't want to. I love the way that insole looks. It's amazing. Um, I started having some foot problems, I don't know, probably last year sometime. And the doctor was like, well, you're going to have to start wearing these special insoles. And I was like, great. <laughs> so, uh, but it's helped my foot problem. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of times... Shoes fit better with those insoles because the factory insoles need time to wear down a little bit yep. to mold to your foot. Yep. Um, whereas these are already molded to my foot. They're perfect. They go right in. The only problem I ever have is when they've glued down the insole, then I have to make the choice of, yes. is it worth it to rip the old insole out? Which, you know, on Vans is particularly difficult yes. and yeah, yeah. <laughs> it can be on chucks. Too, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's so. I hear you talking Nike a lot, Vans, yeah. uh, Converse. Do you ever buy Adidas? <laughs> um, you know, recently I have had a few pairs of Adidas. I will admit to the fact that I haven't. Well, I have a pair of Easy Wave Runners in my collection, but that's okay. about it at this point. Um, I have no 350s. I have, I really appreciate old school, you know, Adidas Originals. Yep. Uh, Silhouettes a lot. Dan Smith, you know, Shell Toes, all that stuff. I really appreciate them. Um, but yeah, for whatever reason, it just doesn't do it for me these days. Yep. It's not what I'm really into. I'm more into Nike. I'm more into even, um, you know, you're more kind of satellite brands like Saucony and yeah. things like that. I, I would probably rather find a, a random collab in that to wear than I would, you know, um, a pair of Stan Smiths or something like that. I, I just, Which I, I didn't remember, but the tongue on the Stan Smith um, digs into my leg, and I didn't don't remember that happening before. <laughs> That's so random. That's so random. That's like a... It is. It's super random, but it, I mean... We all have our, our weird issues with different shoes, oh, right? Oh, com oh yes. completely, completely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes, we're all, we all, yeah. It's funny. I think we've said this before, but like, we're all into shoes, but like, mm -hmm. feet just don't make shoes easy, do they? Like, feet just no. make, make shoes no. complicated. <laughs> um, I'd love, yeah, I'd love to have about five different sets of feet that I could change out for, for different shoes. Yeah, definitely. That'd be great. D definitely. So I think um, I was going to like, Right, so you have like you know you have your pairs, you got those the, the the collection there. You've clearly you clearly curate that really quite. I would say actually the way that we should all probably curate our collections, <laughs> um, if I'm honest. Um, right, let's imagine that um, we've got every we've got every everything that's important to you from a people point of view, out of the house, from an animal point of view, if there are animals in the house, they're out of the house, the house is burning down, the insurance has covered it, they've already phoned you and go, yo, Strix, yeah, we, we got you covered, there's not even a copay thing on this, like, you it's like, you don't even have to worry about it, you, you've got enough time to go back into the house and get one pair of shoes, have we talked Man. about that pair of shoes, or is it another pair of shoes? That's a great, great question, like I said, I since I have that huge gap, I don't have many super sentimental pair of shoes, pairs of shoes that I've had for you know years upon years that I would never want to let go of. Um, I mean, what was I'm trying to think of the, the hardest pair of shoes for me to get? That's a great, great question. Um, you know, 
It's probably going to be... Honestly, it's probably going to be those unions, not because I spent so much money on them, but because that that's never going to re-release, right? Yep. It, almost definitely, it's never going to re-release. The, the Chicago's, which I love dearly, um, though they may re-release those later this year or next year or whatever, you know, and I'll get another chance at those. But the unions, without having to pay through the nose, I won't get another chance at them. So, of the ones I have in my collection, that's probably the top. The, the one I would go for first. Um, there are definitely, you know, there's dumps that I love. The Black Pigeons are great. You know, um, I've been waiting for those safaris for so long, I feel like. But yeah. it's just like, those are, like, wow, they're finally here, that kind of thing. But, um, yeah, it's got to be the black pigeon. Okay, okay. I was like, Huxley, come on, calm down. I think Hux, I think Huxley was getting a little bit excited. He heard but you say pigeons. Yeah, he was like, right, you said pigeons? What? <laughs> <laughs> pigeon? It, it doesn't mean you actually have to get excited, Huxley. So uh, <laughs> it's a, uh, it's. I, I'd say like it's you know, um, it's great to finally talk to you. Um, Absolutely. It's, it's been a long time. Um, and for people who are, as I said at the start of this, for people who are like just listening to this podcast, we've been talking to Strix over Instagram and, and YouTube for a long time, it feels. And um, yeah, it's, it's, I'm, I'm glad that you could come on. Um, I suppose, um, you know, in a, in a new segment um, that uh, Toxic in- introduced last week, he came prepared with many, many questions, which was slightly. Oh, <laughs> yeah, he spun it round. All right. It was like, whoa, dude. Um, and I'm kind of like, I. If you if you could ask us one question. One question. Yeah. <laughs> one question. One question or two, or two. Hmm. Uh, let's see. I think. So. Let's turn it on you guys. I mean, I know SJ answered some of these questions for uh, podcast episode. Um, this could be like, what? What's the one shoe that? What's the one shoe that you regret buying? Um, but what's the? And then I'll add on to that. Yeah. But what's also the one shoe that um, you regret not buying? Well, I can do that one first. Okay. I can do that. I, I, it's the, the, yeah, the, the one that you had the chance. You had a chance. It was easy enough to get. Yep. You just passed on it. It wasn't easy to get. I had it in hand. Okay. I had it in hand. I went to a, I went to, I went to a flight club uh, in New York, and I had it in hand. It was a black pigeon. Okay. I think I've told this story before, but it was like, it was in my hand. And I expressly gone there to buy that shoe like i was right right i got this amount of dollars set aside i'm going in there i know the price and i had it in my hand i wasn't feeling it and i was also overwhelmed yeah. i was overwhelmed again by by being in that shop um, it's flight club yeah and it, yeah <laughs> completely but then i had my head turned by um i had it turned by the uh the reverse shatter backboard which I'd wanted to get in 2016 when it had come out yeah. then and we failed, but it is the pigeon. Um, it was there. I look at it now, like I see other people's pictures on Instagram and I kind of like, I regret that so much. <laughs> um, it's And then the ones that I, I shouldn't have bought, I shouldn't have bought the, there's a human race, uh, the clown, That's right. The clown shoes. Um, yeah. Like, they feel comfortable. <laughs> I don't know. Like, like everyone was telling me how comfortable these shoes were, and they're all right. Um, yeah. But, but like, I, I don't know what I was expecting. I think I was expecting some kind of epiphany of moment where my feet suddenly go, you have been abusing us all these years. Suddenly, right. like, it's down feathers, and, like, you're walking on pillows and things. And, and there wasn't that kind of epiphany and then i looked down and i was a clown literally i was that clown (laughs) this is 
This is kind of how I feel about boost in general. I feel like people over, yes, over exaggerate boost as you know this amazing technology, and I'm like, it's not that amazing. I mean, in fact, I have I've had I think two pairs of boost shoes, and both of them ended up hurting my feet eventually. So it's you know, I I don't get it, but yeah. Yeah, it's uh, I don't know, boost. It's it's weird, as you say. Like I, I was expecting this moment. This like, I'd heard so much, mm-hmm. and I was kind of like waiting for the clouds to part, a sunbeam to come down, <laughs> and kind of like an organ to start playing or something, and a choir yes. in the background. And it was like, oh, it was all right. It's not, <laughs> you know, it's like I've got Nikes that feel just like this, and they haven't got special yeah. stuff in them. Um, so just the lonely person in the corner playing a sad trumpet. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> literally, <laughs> literally. It's uh, yeah. We, I wish I had some trumpet yeah. sounds. I could like literally go. Wah, wah. Anyway, <laughs> so I'll throw one more at you both. Where's where is the one place you would move to if you could do that after we get out of lockdown? Like leave England and move somewhere in the world, where would it be? I mean, I'm guessing I know the answer already, but I don't know. Well, I'd like to be back in California. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, <laughs> I'd like to be back in California somewhere. You know what? I I say this a lot. Um, I wish I could fuse California with the UK in some way. There are like... So nowhere in the world is perfect at all, sure. um, no. you know. And like, there's there's a lot of. You have to tell me, I live in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not making any comment. <laughs> yeah, I won't go there. I've been to Texas once. <laughs> it was nice. We went it's to Austin. not terrible. It's just yeah. Uh, I mean, it's I definitely to... not perfect. I so we'll to... go with that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I just liked you know like I've often also said it'd be great if we could just remove the Atlantic. <laughs> and, move, and, and move the two countries closer together they because then yeah. i could jump between the two but yeah prob- probably yeah. california um i think that's okay. more um i don't think we really bay, bay area right yeah not, not southern california yeah yeah I think... yeah like okay. i always thought it was it was really weird because i always thought i prefer to live in la and i ended up spending quite a bit of time there for work and i really didn't didn't really like the yeah, vibe uh, as much. Like I like visiting LA, like all around West Hollywood, Melrose, and um, mm-hmm. the bit Fairfax. Where, yeah, Fairfax. I love all of that. I don't like downtown yeah. LA at all. But I yeah. just really like the relaxed vibe there is in the Bay Area, or how I felt there was a relaxed vibe where we lived anyway. Um, right, right. But yeah, no, nowhere's perfect. I mean. Couldn't let the dog off the leash in most places, which I I could not get my head around. Thought that was bonkers, but <laughs> yeah, I, I think <laughs> it's, it, it's crazy. Yeah. You know the the leash laws in California. Uh, if you're in California, you all know what I'm talking about, or, or, or certainly in Northern California, very peculiar. I think um, that I think you know if we bring it back to shoes, it's just um, from a shoe point of view, there's just more shoes released. In the U.S. In the U.S. Yeah. It feel it felt like there were it was easier to or not easier, but there was just more opportunity to buy. The other thing that I yeah. really like, um, just about the U.S. in general, and this is more about Nike SB, is um, because of the size of the market, there is just more collabs with more stores, um, mm-hmm. and so there's more interesting stories. You don't see so many coll collabs with stores in across europe you know it's quite rare right. um you know occasionally with you know small skate uh, companies and that's that's one of from a shoe point of view that's one of the the, the differences and one of the things that i kind of miss um I, we really noticed it when we came back it was like wow we can't get half of these sneakers yeah um yeah which is quite annoying but it, you know, as I said, you know, but then 
you know, we, we, there, there's many great things about the UK. We we have a health service. Um, <laughs> uh, it might this be true. It might be struggling at the moment, you know, as as most are. But uh, you know, it's there. Uh, yeah, it's just uh, there's there's different places. As I said, if I could fuse the two areas of the world together, uh, and then I'm just going to throw in a random one. Um, okay. I'd like to be able to fly by jet to the Seychelles every couple of weeks, <laughs> if that's okay. Um, you know, if if I'm allowed to have that. Uh, Basically, we need a private jet, and we'd be sorted. That's what we need. That didn't. I mean, I don't feel world. like that's a lot to ask for. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, then I'll spin that back on you. Um, you know, you are obviously uh, yeah. in in Texas somewhere. Yeah. Um, where would yeah. you live? Before, um, before our kid was born, we did a lot of traveling. Um, we didn't have him until later in life here. Yep. So, um, uh, you know, it, we were, we were lucky in that we were both, you know, making decent money. And so we could travel wherever we wanted to go more or less. Um, we, so I always go back to the places that I've, you know, I've traveled to like that. I mean, if we're talking in the States, I'm probably moving to some place like Southern California, LA, not LA per se, because I love LA and I'm a lot like us. I love LA for visiting. I don't, want to live there yeah. um we went to san diego last year for the first time that's the first time i've ever been to san diego and i was amazed at how livable it felt to me outside of the price the cost of living yep um, but the actual city itself just felt very livable to me and i was like i could totally see myself living here um that said if you go i mean i love chicago i love new york all for different reasons yeah, yeah. i don't know that i want to live in either of those places um if we're moving outside of the states man um i have friends and, and for a brief time i worked with friends um in sweden in stockholm nice. um and we got to my wife and i got to go over there and visit them and that kind of thing they they basically flew us out there um which was great and it was an amazing time and i love stockholm it was like public transportation was you know japanese precision basically oh, yeah. and you know it was you know but it was super relaxed yep um the language barrier is not a big one to jump because everybody there basically speaks english so yep. it's super easy um but yeah i mean i even so i worked with them because i i'm a big I've been supporting Liverpool for 20 years. Like that's that's my soccer team. Okay, and I know it's random, yeah, super random. It is. Um, but I'm a big Liverpool fan, and so um, I was doing graphic fan shirts basically for this company out of Sweden. Um, I was designing fan shirts for them. Um, that's how I got picked up with them. But one of the times they decided to fly me over to Liverpool to go to a game. Um, so we went to a game at Anfield, and then we went to we also the day before we went to a game at Old Trafford. Um, nice. To watch, you know, and uh, I had to keep my mouth quiet when Aston Villa scored on him. Um, but <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's good. That's good. I could cheer for that. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, it was. Um, I would. I could see myself living. Uh, you know. I, I could maybe see myself living in Liverpool. I didn't spend enough time there. It, Stockholm, I felt like I could, I definitely could. Um, I'm Korean. I've been back to Korea a few times. Um, that's a, that place, for whatever reason, it fills my soul um, when I go there. Not yep. to make a pun. It's, uh, <laughs> but my mom's family is from the Southeast Coast. And uh, just that entire country, when I go back, it just feels like home. So, I would say one of those two. I've loved Paris. I've loved Rome. Is kind of a weird one because we went when it was Roman holiday, so it was not nearly as congested and crowded yeah. as it normally is. And I was like, if this is how Rome is normally, I could do Rome, but um, it's not. It's not. <laughs> it's not. It's not at all. No. Uh, it's a. Uh, it's funny. Yeah. All, but all, all the places that you've picked, they've all got like little bits of sneaker history to them and, and heritage oh, yeah. it's uh yeah. like all, all of those places in one way yeah. or another there's some good sneaker shopping in stockholm I oh mean, for I went sure to some really cool places when i was there what 
Oh yeah. Eighteen well, I mean, months you ago. Know, there's obviously sneakers and stuff. Yeah, and, yeah. clearly. Yeah. World renowned at this point. Uh, my friend actually texted me from one of my friends from Stockholm texted me randomly the other day, and we were talking about sneakers, and he was talking about how. You can just walk into sneakers and stuff and go, you know, whatever. And I'm just like, yep, I'm here in Dallas. There's not much going on. (laughs) (laughs) And they're not in lockdown in Stockholm at the moment, which is even peculiar. That's wild to me. I don't really understand it. Nope. Nope. Um, The Swedes are, yep, they'll do what they do. And and we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. So I I just want to say thanks for joining us. this yeah. afternoon um uh, it was great chatting finally and uh this yeah, so yeah it's uh yeah i think you know hunt Strix down on uh instagram i will uh i'll if you're watching this on youtube i'll drop a link in the thing if you're finding this on the podcast i'll put a link in the description um of whatever your podcast platform is and you can find him there uh he is a photographer so his pictures are going to look all right compared to ours uh <laughs> so yeah and uh, obviously uh if you are watching on youtube don't forget to subscribe it's down here on your favorite podcast platforms spotify whatever don't forget to um subscribe i think that's what we do on on, on spotify and uh, yeah until next time people we will uh we'll see you all later he says pressing the wrong button thanks for listening to sneakers and stories 